Now request uh, Dr. Shoival Gupta, who is Country Core Director of IGC Bihar program, to come and speak. For governments and stakeholders who do not have uh, access to first class researchers, the IGC being located in LSE and at Oxford with its network spread across the world was available for this purpose and it was the country team which had to identify the appropriate person for the job at hand. This restriction has meant that each country team has been working in isolation apart from events such as this one or at growth week with no other access to each other. While this approach was useful at first when IGC was taking the few first steps in phase two we need to identify and define a broader area of interaction. For this purpose, the IGC and the conferences such as this could in fact play a major role. I think the Honorable Minister has already set the agenda and there should be a concerted effort for better Indo-Pak relationship. Any growth process or path to be meaningful must satisfy the twin properties of being inclusive and sustainable the first means that no individual or class should be let, left out from sharing the fruits of growth, while the second term implies that no future class or generation should be discriminated against in the sense that the choice available before them should be no less than what is available to us. A moment's reflection should convince people that both of these terms imply similar things. First, there should be no discrimination in the sense that no one is left out from enjoying the fruits of growth. Currently, not should there be any discrimination against any future generation. Thus, for growth process to qualify for being desired, some pretty stiff conditions need to be ensured. What has been observed of late is that while growth has taken place at hitherto unexpected rate, it has not been inclusive. Witness, for example, the rising inequality. Thus, there are people who are being left out. It is clear, therefore, that such process will not be sustainable, either given the scant interest we are paying to the maintenance of environment in pursuit of growth. As a result of gro growth leading or perhaps being accompanied by inequality, tension in societies have been witnessed on unprecedented scale. It all began with Tunisia and then traveled across the globe. It is not as if this was restricted only to countries generally clubbed under the rubric of developing countries, but this unrest manifested itself in the US as well as in the Occupy Wall Street movement. Such points of conflict, unfortunately, are still there. Just prior to this show of discontent, the collapse of the financial system, sometimes referred to as the financial crunch, was the first shock government decided to bail out. Uh, banks, a rather unpopular decision in the first place. On the other hand, in developing countries, huge scams and frauds have continued to surface from time to time. That it appears that policymakers have already been discredited for one reason or another. The entire world order, financial, economic and social was shaken. On the other hand, the market had apparently failed and on the other, the state too have failed for different reasons in different countries. In the north, the developed world, the state failed mainly in its role of a guardian of the market. In the south, the developing countries, the state failed because it was weak. It, if it existed at all, it was thus been global failure of the state to take corrective actions. Whenever there has been such upheavals in either the economy of the or the state, we have witnessed the appearance of institutions to look into functioning of the economic system. Consider, for example, the World, uh, the world Bank set up in 1944 in the aftermath of World War II as the International Bank of Reconstruction and Development. This institution uh, has developed into a closely associated group of several uh, development institutions. Among the articles of agreement, of the World Bank, the second item on Article 1 read that follows. To promote private foreign investment by means of guarantee. This 
the World Bank has done and continues to carry out. Among the points in 1 to 5 in Article 1, however, strengthening the state does not figure. The problem, however, is that much of the problem in FISAS today, particularly in the developing countries and in South Asia, are because of the weak state, sometimes even a non-existent state. Consider, for example, the article in the mandate of the World Bank mentioned above relating to the promotion of foreign investment. Why should foreign investment come if there are no minimum safeguards or if governance issues exist or if infrastructure is inadequate? These issues need to be carefully examined. Accordingly, there is no need for the existence of an institution which helps strengthen the state according to each state's need. The International Growth Center is admirably placed to carry out this task and given its location within LSE and Oxford, one can ask for better uh, pedigree. Particularly, the objective of carrying out demand-driven research meets this, uh, meet this purpose. In the context of South Asia, many of the problems that the state faces are same. There are some which are distinct, of course. Consequently, carrying out joint programs of research targeting the common problem will not only provide us with deeper insights, but also develop the synergies from our studies. This would also contribute towards the strengthening of the state. In addition, this activity of strengthening the state will be complementary to the World Bank's activities as well. Clearly, this is the only way that growth can be ensured to be non-discriminatory both currently as well as across generation. And to enable the IGC, South Asia to shape world opinion, one may be, one may be to bring out an annual publication wherein each year an assigned topic which is crucial to South Asia is taken up for discussion by scholars. This volume would provide the much needed common forum for South Asia. Step like this is urgently required. Last, there is another crucial aspect that this annual publication could focus on, the contribution of the so-called South within South as well as that of contribution of South within North. The South, the developing countries would benefit immensely from the advice and the experience of South as we have seen. It is first of all much more convincing to see people in similar situations overcome similar difficulties and more importantly it is the source of hope that difficulties which appear insurmountable may be in fact be overcome. The contribution of South in the North and the developed world is equally crucial for that indicates that the ground realities are. The South Asian Growth Conference is uniquely placed to provide this forum. In fact, it is already enabling this interchange. With the publication mentioned above, this will be documented and made available to all those who are interested in growth which transformed and transformed permanently. I am sure that there will be more views placed on the table for our consideration, but if we can go back from Lahore with some accord on the above, we should feel satisfied that we have taken an important first step. Thank you, sir.